Bluetooth to your data collector to avoid a lot of, of excess cables. Well, your data collector itself probably has Wi-Fi built into it, like if it's Microsoft Mobile 03 or 08, 05 or whatever. But some of the data collectors have little slots in the top that you can stick this tiny little cellular modem into. Drawback being it's a little tiny antenna and it's usually under a cap. This is really excellent for a place where you know you've got good cell coverage and you're going to do a lot of work and you've avoided a lot of cables. So sell on the, sell on the data collector, sell on the uh, receiver itself, or attached cable or Bluetooth. That's the main ones. People have taken this a little bit farther. This device came from Europe and it was designed to provide corrections from networks to um, like those mobile mapping vans or, or hydro gear, which are used to getting corrections in by radio. And very simply, this has got a, uh, a cell receiver built into it. You put a little SIM card when you order your account, uh, like with these or the onboard, um, you know, onboard cell receivers. You take that little SIM card when you get the data, data account and you slip it into here. This one you program through text messaging from your phone. It has a serial port out the back which goes into the receiver and a place for an external antenna. So that's one way to do it. Another way is your data collector's probably got Wi-Fi built into it nowadays, as I said, and you can turn your truck into a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. You can have a wireless router, and in this case, I put in a broadband card, which gives me a lot of bandwidth, and uh, with an external antenna on the broadband card, say on a whip antenna on top of the vehicle, you, uh, let me stack these up a little more aesthetically here. Um, you, you, have got really great broadband reception and you've turned your vehicle and your job site into a Wi-Fi hotspot. Drawback is uh, a lot of the Wi-Fi and some of the data collectors maybe four or five hundred feet out of it. Uh, there are people that modify those and maybe get a thousand. But uh, a lot of surveyors I work with don't venture more than 400 feet from the truck so that's that's gonna work. More pouches to hang on poles. Ah! I just damaged that surveyor there. And this phone is the same as my voice phone, except we got a data only account for it, and they're pretty indestructible. We use the serial cable out of this, it's not Bluetooth capable. There's a lot of different hardware you can use. The critical part is convincing the uh, cell provider of the right buzzword for them to get you your data only. And people ask about, well, they have the plans with a five megabyte and 10 megabyte. Well, that can vary a lot depending on how much you're gonna use it. So a lot of folks start with a, um, a lot of folks start with a uh, unlimited and see how it goes and see how much uh, use they're gonna get out of it and figure whether they can go to one of those metered accounts there's not a lot of difference sometimes. All the carriers carry some kind of data account. Now when you go to get in your data collector you're going to need to do certain settings to get it to work and those are modem modem settings. When you've got something like Microsoft Mobile or Windows CE <clears throat> you go into control panel uh, network settings and you go add a modem uh, in some of them, it's like add Hayes compatible modem, and then you go through the steps. Something you're going to need from your um, cell provider uh, up front is they need to provide you this. Your ITN um, operators are not versed on absolutely every account out there, so don't bug them too much. That cell provider needs to pr provide you with this, or don't mess with them, is a dialing code. It's not really a phone number. For instance, um, on Nextel, over most of the country, it's S equals 2. You would put in instead of a phone number. Ignore all of the area code stuff. Once you have that access code, there's no long distance on the data. You're not actually dialing a phone number. So you're going to need that. 
on some of the cell providers accounts for their data only you're going to need special modem commands which are under the advanced and the syntax on that can vary even within the same provider a lot of them don't have that and a few of them you're going to need a username and password on most of them you just need that phone number you leave the username and password out do not uh, confuse the username and password of um, your RTN account if they require authentication with the username and password that you might uh, uh, need for the cell account with the one for the RTN. Don't put anything in the uh, network connection username and password unless the cell provider has uh, insisted that you do so. Uh, that's probably 20% of all phone calls we get with new RTN users is I put in my username and password and it didn't work. Now, uh, when you uh, have made the connection to the internet, I suggest something I call the ESPN test. If you think your dumb modem, whatever it be, the built-in, the onboard, the cable, or the uh, Bluetooth, I want you to get into your data collector, open up Internet Explorer, and try to go to a website like check the latest scores or the latest political news or whatever your, your, your hobby horse is. And if you can get to that Internet, that's 90% of the way there. If you can't get there, the RTN is, you're not even knocking on the door of the RTN. You have to be able to get to the Internet before you can even start playing with RTN. Now, that, that's, that'll be another story. Anyhow, thanks for bearing with me and uh, Marvin and the little surveyor here. Thanks. Bye.